which of these two groups or parties is more entitled to peace? One party is Muwahideen, who believe in one Allah alone. No smaller Allahs, no, no Aliha, no gods and goddesses, no Devis and Devtas. The only one. And there are others who believe in the Supreme God. The Hindus also believe that at the top is one. Paramatma is one. Mahadeo is one. Under this Paramatma and Mahadeo, there are so many Devis and Devtas. Even in, you know, Greece and Rome, they had God with capital G. He was always one. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. But underneath him there was an army of gods and goddesses, innumerable gods and goddesses. Same was the case in Arabia at the time of the Prophet. Allah won. But underneath there are so many aliha. So now there is one party who believes only in one Allah, having all the authority, and a party who believes in Allah also and aliha also. Who will be more entitled to peace? What does it mean? Inner contentment. Inner tranquility, peace of mind. Can you serve many gods? Can you serve many masters? A person who has to serve only one master, will he be at peace? Or a person who has to serve so many masters? This peace, I have a small booklet, the Quran and the world peace. And this is one of the main, you know, basic ayat on which I have built that thesis. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking this question. If you know, give the reply. Now he himself is replying. Those who believe who have the real faith and they don't Mix up their iman with any form of shirk, any form of zulm. Zulm, what is it? Shirk. Because we have in Surah Al-Luqman, inna shirk ala zulmun azim. So, iman with complete tawheed. If you have this, lam yalbisu imanahum bi zulmin, ulaika lahumul am. Because when this ayah was revealed, some of the companions of the Prophet came to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and they said oh messenger of Allah who among us can be who doesn't do any wrong to anything wrong to himself they have not polluted their iman with any wrongdoing who can you know fulfill this criterion the prophet said don't you read the ayah in surah al-luqman here zulm means shirk. Inna shirk ala zulmun azim. Ba is qala luqmanu libnihi wa huwa ya'izuhu ya bunayya la tushrik billah inna shirk ala zulmun azim. Maybe you are mistaken. Maybe out of ignorance you, are, you, are, you have committed something wrong and you have committed it against your own selves. Or you have done something wrong to somebody else, to your brother, to your neighbor, to anybody else. But you know this is something else. You will repent. Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you have polluted your iman with the slightest shirk, then there is going to be no pardoning. We read the, those words twice in Surah An-Nisa. Inna la la yaghfiru yushraka bi wa yaghfiru maadu nazalika li man yasha. This is unpardonable. It won't be pardoned. Short of that, these you know discrepancies, these mistakes, these sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon to whomsoever he likes. And such people will have the inner tranquility and amn and peace, inner peace, peace of mind, peace of heart. And only they are the people who are rightly guided. Now comes that ayah. I told you this ayah says 
that actually this Haza Rabbi and Haza Rabbi and Haza Rabbi, it was only for sake of argument. Not that Ibrahim really believed in it. He was a prophet. And a prophet is innocent from the very birth. He could not ever have committed shirk. He could not have said to people that he, he could not believe in it. But he said to the people, only an argument. But tilka hujjatuna atainaha Ibrahim ala qawmi. And this was our argument which, gave, which we gave to Ibrahim against his nation. You know, you need some methodology to convince the people how to approach their minds. You have to talk to them at their own level of consciousness. So he started with it. Okay. You believe in the star? Oh, yes, it's shining. It's very high. Maybe. It's just, you know, possible that it is the Lord. But then when it said, oh... We are not going to love those who sit. Step by step, he took his nation or people to this level. So it was actually for the sake of argument. We raise in ranks whomsoever we like. Now, Ibrahim. We, him we raised to a very high rank. وَاتَّخَذُ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا We have already read. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ Verily, your Lord, your Rabb, is all-knowing, all-wise. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبُ And we gave him, Ibrahim, a son like Ishaq, and a grandson like Yaqub. كُلًّا هَدَيْنَا And all of them, we, we guided them to the right path. And we had given the guidance to Nuh before him. And from among his progeny, Dawood, Awa Suleiman, Awa Ayyub, Awa Yusuf, Awa Musa, Awa Harun. Among the progeny of Ibrahim, we raised Dawood and Suleiman and Ayyub and Yusuf and Musa and Harun. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa kazadika najzil muhsaneen. And this is how we give reward to those people who do good, who worship Allah in the best of the ways, in the most earnest ways. As I explained, Ihsan, the highest level, spiritual level, Islam, then Iman, then Ihsan. And this is how we recompense, we give the reward to those Muhsaneen. Bazakariya. And not only the, them, but Zakariya, wa Yahya, wa Isa, wa Ilyasa, kullu mina salihin. Among his progeny, we raised Zakariya, Yahya, and Isa, wa Ilyasa, and all were from the righteous people. Wa Ismail, wa Ilyasa, wa Yunus, wa Luta. As I told you, we, when we were reading Surah Nisa, at different intervals in Quran, we find, you know, these names of the prophets and messengers of Allah. Arranged as if flowers in a flower pot. So this is again another flower pot of the names of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many prophets named here? Nine in one. And if you add Ibrahim, then they become ten. Then Zakariya, wa Yahya, wa Isa, wa Ilyas. Then Ismaila. وَالْيَسْعَى وَيُونُسَى وَلُوتَى وَكُلًّا فَضَّلْنَا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Now, it's about 12, 11, 12, yes, 12 names of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْ عَبَائِهِمْ وَزُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ وَإِخْوَانِهِمْ And each prophet had, you know, around him a circle of righteous people. If you are on the right path, you can hope that your progeny, your sons, maybe they are not prophets, but they will be. They will be on the right path. And this has been the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although there is possibility, someone may, may go wrong way. Out of four sons of Hazrat Enu, one was, you know, doomed. And he was drowned before his own eyes, before the eyes of the father. But three were with him on the right path. And it's very, you know, bad today that, you know, many of great ulama and big, you know, religious leaders, we find that out of their sons. None is going the way they used to go. 
This is a bad, a bad sign. It is just possible if you have four sons, one doesn't take to your path, three should come. We have examples. Hazrat Ahmad Sarhandi Rahmatullahi Alay, he had four, and all the four were on the same path as the father. In the same way, Shah Waliullah Dehlavi Rahmatullahi Alay had four sons, and all the four were on that right path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. So in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, around these prophets of Allah, there were their fathers and their progeny, their sons and daughters, him and their brothers, whom We all chosen, all of them. We, we liked them. وَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And then we guided them to the, to the straight path. 